In this video, I'm going to discuss isothermal processes. So what does it mean to be isothermal? Iso means the same, and thermal means temperature. So isothermal means the same temperature. The condition that we're imposing on our system is constant temperature. So T, the value of the temperature in the system, is going to be constant throughout the entire duration of the process. First, let's have a look at what this looks like in the real world. What is a realistic system that undergoes an isothermal process? This container over here has a piston. And inside the container, there is an ideal gas, or at least a gas that can be approximated ideally. So that means it satisfies the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT. So T, this, this term over here, this value, is actually constant. N, the number of moles, that's also constant because the amount of particles inside this container is not changing. There's no flow of matter in and out. So it's a closed system in that, in that respect. R over here, that's the gas constant, so that's not going to change. So this product, NRT, that is constant. That's not going to vary over time. P and V, they are free to change. So work can actually occur. The piston can move down during isothermal compression, and the piston can move up during isothermal expansion. Those are the two types of processes we can do with this system. Around this system, we also have a heat sink. And a heat sink is very important because it has a very high heat capacity. So for all practical purposes, a heat sink doesn't change its temperature. It keeps its temperature constant regardless of what kind of stuff is going on over here. So it doesn't matter what type of heat is being exchanged, it's always going to remain at a constant temperature. So that's one of the properties of a thermal reservoir. Uh, a thermal reservoir, in, in practice, could be a uh, bath of water that's at a certain temperature. It could also be a refrigerator. Uh, it could also be a Bunsen burner or some kind of fire that's heating the stuff. As long as the temperature is maintained at a constant value, that is gonna, uh, that's actually going to be consistent with our isothermal condition. Another way of summarizing the isothermal condition is dt equals zero where an infinitesimal change in the temperature is zero for every point during the process. So the temperature is not changing. That's the isothermal condition. If we use the isothermal condition and the ideal gas law together, what we're actually going to see is that the internal energy doesn't change. So the internal energy is constant as well. Now, how can we actually summarize that? We can say delta U, the change in internal energy, is zero. This is true for an ideal gas because of the relationship between the internal energy and temperature of an ideal gas. This may not be true for other systems. So this condition over here can now be used in conjunction with the first law of thermodynamics. And the first law of thermodynamics says that the only way you can change the internal energy is through heat and work. So heat plus work, that's equal to delta U. So if you think about it, that's actually just another way of saying the conservation of energy. If you want to change this energy, you have to do it with another type of energy. You could do it with heat energy, or you could do it with work. So heat energy is a kind of noisy energy at a microscopic scale, whereas work, that's more of a macroscopic energy. In the, in the type of work we're doing in this system is compression expansion work. So compression is going to be pushing down. Expansion is going to be uh, lifting this piston up. And that's the type of work we're going to be looking at. So W is the work and Q is the heat. And another important thing from that uh, first law of thermodynamics, because we know the sum of the heat and the work has to be zero, we know that the work is actually the negative of the heat. So this sign is here by convention. We could have chosen uh, to put the sign in somewhere else, but for the convention I'm using uh, on the whiteboard over here, this guy is actually the negative of this guy. So these, these guys conspire together to keep the change in internal energy zero. And this is because all of these quantities conspire together to keep the temperature constant. So all the other values are conspiring to keep this value the same. So it's not allowed to change. But these guys are allowed to change. The pressure and volume can change. So another interesting condition is that the product of the pressure and volume, that is constant. That comes directly from the ideal gas law. If this guy is constant, the number of moles, because there's no movement of matter, and this guy is constant, the gas constant, it's not changing. And this guy, by the isothermal condition, is also constant. That means this product is constant. 
So if this product is constant, then the left-hand side is also constant. So the product of pressure and volume is not going to change during an isothermal process, if it's an ideal gas we're looking at. So P1V1 is equal to P2V2. That works for every single point on an isothermal curve. So now let's actually look at this representation on the PV diagram. So the PV diagram has pressure on the vertical axis and has on the horizontal axis volume. So that's why it's the PV diagram. Every point on the PV diagram can be assigned a coordinate. And the coordinates uh, for that point are volume and pressure. So if we have a look at this point over here, this is V1P1, and this point is V2P2. These guys can be treated as the initial and final points of an isothermal process. What does a curve look like that satisfies the isothermal condition? Well, it's actually a rectangular hyperbola. And a rectangular hyperbola is exactly the same as the curve of 1 on x. So if you're familiar with some of the, the basic functions, 1 on x has that rectangular hyperbola shape. And that's actually what we get from this. If we rearrange this equation, if we divide both sides by v, then we have a constant divided by v. So this is p as a function of v equals 1 on v. So 1 on v is actually this function over here. And if you think about it, the constant we're scaling it by is related to the temperature. So higher temperatures are going to have uh, hyperbolas that are higher up. So they're further away from the origin. If you have hyperbolas that are up over here, they're going to have higher temperatures. And down here, isotherms are going to have lower temperatures. So lower temperatures are closer to the origin, and higher temperatures are further away. Why? It's because the product of the pressure and volume is larger the further away you move. So the higher up you go, the larger this product is. But every point that is on the same isotherm is going to have the same product, and it's going to have the same temperature. So if we were to implement an isothermal process, let's say it's isothermal expansion, where we start at this point and finish at this point, what would that look like physically? Well, we'd be starting over here, and we'd be increasing the volume, right? The volume is getting bigger, so this would be expansion, isothermal expansion. And what would the work done in isothermal expansion be? Well, as we said before, we had a 1 on v function. And what's the integral of 1 on v? Well, that's natural log. That's where this natural log comes from. And this ratio of V2 over V1, that comes from evaluating uh, the bounds of the definite integral. So we're starting at V2, uh, and then we're subtracting off V1. And why is this negative? Because the negative of the area under the curve, that's the work that we're interested in, if we're using this sign convention. Why is it negative? Well, it's because we're losing energy. When we expand, the gas loses energy, because it does work on the surroundings. So it's giving some of its internal energy up to the surroundings. But if it was just giving up its internal energy to the surroundings, then its internal energy would decrease and its temperature would decrease. But that's not allowed. So what do we have to do to compensate? Well, we have to allow heat to flow in from the thermal reservoir. So this is not thermally isolated. Heat can flow in. And the amount of heat that flows in is actually exactly the same as the amount of work that was used during the isothermal expansion. The only difference is the sign. The sign of the heat is positive if the work is negative. Why? Because heat is flowing in. Uh, or to the contrary, if you had heat flowing out, if we had a negative sign for the heat, then the compression work would be positive. Why? Because compression increases the internal energy of the gas. But to compensate for that, we've got to get heat flowing out. So the heat and the work are conspiring to keep the temperature at the same value. So in this diagram over here, what we have is the PV representation of an isotherm. An isotherm is a rectangular hyperbola. Every point along here has the same temperature. So this guy over here, this is the work specifically from the point 1 to the point 2. So where all these subscripts are 2 and all these subscripts are 1. If we wanted the reverse, which we just described before, the compression situation, then we would switch these guys around and we would have the work from 2 to 1. So we'd have to switch these guys around. And when you switch this, when you take the reciprocal inside the natural log, that gives you a negative sign. And those negatives cancel, and so you get positive work. So it all works out. So this over here is the visual representation in the PV diagram. These over here are some of the quantitative uh, facts that we can say about this system. And this is what this system would look like if we were trying to implement it in the real world. 
So the takeaway message from this video is isothermal processes have constant temperature and they can be represented as rectangular hyperbolas on the PV diagram. And keep in mind, the heat and the work have to conspire together to keep the internal energy constant so that the temperature remains constant. That is the condition for an isothermal process.